Mark announced that Llama 3 is coming out eventually. I don't think there's a release date, but what what are you most excited about? First of all, Llama 2 that's already out there and maybe the future, Llama 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, just the, the future of the open source under Meta. Well, a number of things. So uh, there's going to be like various versions of, of Llama that are, uh, you know, improvements of previous Llamas, bigger, better, multimodal, things like that. And then in future generations, systems that are capable of planning, that really understand how the world works, uh, maybe are trained from video, so they have some world model, maybe, you know, capable of the type of reasoning and planning I was talking about earlier. Like, how long is that going to take? Like, when is the research that is doing going in that direction going to sort of feed into the product line, if you want, of Lama? I don't know. I can't tell you. And there's, you know, a few breakthroughs that we have to basically uh, go through before we can get there. Mm -hmm. But you'll be able to monitor our progress because we publish our research, right? So, you know, if last week we published the Vijepa. Uh, work, which is sort of a first step towards training systems for video. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next step is going to be world models based on kind of this type of idea, training training from video. Uh, there's similar work at, uh, at DeepMind also and um, uh, taking place people and also at UC Berkeley on uh, world models from video. A lot of people are working on this. I think a lot of good ideas are coming, uh, are appearing. My bet is that those systems are going to be jepa like they're not going to be gener generative models. Um, and uh, we'll see what the future will tell. Um, there's really good work at uh, um, a gentleman called Danny Jar Hafner, who is not DeepMind, who, who's worked on kind of models of this type that learn representations and then use them for planning or learning uh, tasks by reinforcement learning. Um, and a lot of work at Berkeley by uh, uh, Peter Abiel, Sergey Levine, a bunch of other people of that type. Uh, I'm, I'm collaborating with actually in the context of some uh, grants uh, with my NYU hat. Mm -hmm. um, and then collaborations also through Meta because uh, the the lab at Berkeley is associated with uh, Meta in some way. So with FAIR. So I, I think uh, it's very exciting. You know, I, I think I'm super excited about, I, I haven't been that excited about like the direction of machine learning and AI you know, since, uh, you know, 10 years ago when FAIR was started. And before that, um, 30 years ago, we were working on, or 35, on, on convolutional nets and, and, and the early days of uh, neural nets. So um, I'm super excited because I see a path towards potentially human-level intelligence uh, with, you know, systems that can uh, understand the world, remember, plan, reason, um, there, there is some uh, some set of ideas to make progress there that might have a chance of working, and I'm really excited about this. Uh, what I like is that you know it uh, uh, somewhat we we get onto like a good direction and perhaps succeed before my uh, brain turns to uh, white sauce or or before I need to retire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are uh, you also excited by are you? Is it beautiful to you just the amount of GPUs involved, sort of the the, the whole training process on this much compute? It's just zooming out, just looking at Earth and humans together have built these computing devices and are able to train this one brain. Then, then we then open source, <laughs> like giving birth to this open source brain trained on this gigantic compute system. There's just the details of how to train on that, how to build the infrastructure and the the hardware, the cooling, all of this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, or are you just still the most of your excitement is in the the theory aspect of it, the uh, meaning like the software. Aspect. Well, I used to be a hardware guy many years ago. Yes, yes, that's <laughs> decades right. ago. Hardware has uh, improved a little bit, changed a little bit. a little bit. Yeah, I mean, certainly scale is necessary, but not sufficient. Absolutely. So we certainly need computation. I mean, we're still far in terms of compute power uh, from you know what we would need to match the compute power of the human brain. Um, you know, this may occur in the next couple of decades, but um, but we're still some ways away. And certainly in terms of power efficiency, we're really far. Um, so there's a lot of progress to make in uh, in 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 hardware, and 
you know, right now a lot of the progress is 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 not. I mean, there's a bit coming from silicon technology, but a lot of it coming from architectural innovation, and quite a bit coming from uh, uh, like more efficient ways of you know implementing the architectures that have become popular. Basically, combination of transformers and convnets, right? <laughs> and mm-hmm. uh, so uh, you know, there's st- still some ways to go until. Uh, we're gonna saturate. We're gonna have to come up with like new, new principles, new fabrication technology, new uh, basic components. Um, perhaps you know, based on sort of different principles than those classical digital CMOS. Interesting. So you think in order to build AMI, I mean, we need, we potentially might need some hardware innovation too. Well, if we want to make it. Um, ubiquitous, yeah, certainly, because mm-hmm. we're going to have to reduce the, you know, compute the power consumption. A GPU today, right, is half a kilowatt to a kilowatt. Mm-hmm. Human brain is about twenty-five watts, uh, and a GPU is way below the power of human brain. You need, you know, something like a hundred thousand or a million to match it. So, uh, so you know, we are off by a huge factor here. 